In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at these current conditions, diving into the upcoming pattern, as well as some severe weather as always. Let's just take a look here at these current conditions, though. And first things first, you can see that we're dealing with quite a bit of precipitation here in the four corner states. Actually, really a lot happening here for Arizona and New Mexico, I got to say. We do have some activity up here for the Northwest. So for states like Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Nevada, we are seeing some of this showery activity ongoing. We can see that for the southeast and four corner, or four corner states, southeast into the deeper south, better yet, we can see that there is just some of these tropical thunderstorms taking place, especially there offshore of Louisiana. We're seeing quite a bit of this activity taking place. And then up and down the interior eastern United States, we can see quite a bit of showery and thunderstorm activity, mostly heavier down here for Missouri, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, Arkansas down here. Uh, and then we definitely get a little bit more scattered as we head upwards towards Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, uh, and up through New York, We're getting a little bit more scattered with that activity. Now, let's go ahead and just zoom into some of these different regions, mostly quite here in between. There is some thunderstorms there for South Dakota, it appears, but we'll start out here in Washington and Oregon, where there is just these lighter to moderate showers taking place in here nearby Seattle and then up northward through the northern portions of the state into Canada basically. We do see that there is some isolated showers down here as we work our way further south for Idaho, Oregon, uh, Nevada as well. Just very very isolated activity happening down there. Now as we move towards the southwest we can see a lot of heavier activity in this region. Thunderstorms and heavier showers are definitely pretty widespread at this point throughout southern Arizona, and they were pretty widespread throughout southern New Mexico, although those ones have lightened up a little bit. We did see some thunderstorms, or at least what looks like thunderstorms here, in between Albuquerque and Amarillo there, uh, and those have kind of dissipated a little bit. Definitely the heaviest activity at this point it kind of resides here in California and through southern Arizona here. Uh, very, very heavy activity. Now... We do have this scattered thunderstorm activity throughout South Dakota and Nebraska in here, so we'll be watching for that. Some of those do look a little bit more concerning. We can see that down here for the deeper south. We do have just these isolated and scattered thunderstorms around for the Gulf of Mexico. Generally, these could head on shore here to Louisiana and Mississippi. We do see some of these heading on to the Panhandle and Alabama there as well. And then for mainland Florida here, we do see quite a bit of these areas seeing some thunderstorms move on shore as well as these isolated thunderstorms just form offshore. We see some of these for the southeast as well by the way so for states like Georgia and South Carolina those will be possibly hitting as well. Now we see heavier activity as we work our way down through Oklahoma, the Ohio Valley into Missouri, Kansas, uh, states like this. Uh, we also see that Arkansas is seeing a lot of the heaviest activity. I mean this is very very heavy in here. Definitely flooding uh, we can see those flooding warnings coming through as well. St. Louis just saw flooding actually a little while ago too. So unfortunately, another flooding event happening here for states like Illinois, Missouri, Arkansas. Um, very, very heavy and very long-lasting rainfall. As you can see, this is probably an hour plus of rainfall, probably working its way towards two hours of rainfall, I would say. Um, well, let's see. No, going to be more like four hours actually. So very, very long amounts of rainfall happening there and very, very heavy rainfall also, so that's not helping either. We'll definitely be watching that situation. We can see that there is more isolated and scattered activity happening throughout most of the Ohio Valley up here, so for Michigan, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, that's what we're seeing. And then as we work our way towards the northeast, we can see some showers moving across the region, so a little bit more innocent up there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on, and we're going to move on towards the upcoming pattern where we'll take a look at the upcoming storminess, total precipitation, and temperature pattern, and then we'll break down some of that severe weather. Now here we are taking a look at some of this upcoming storminess, and as you can see, we're going to see these storms spreading throughout the eastern United States here. Today on Thursday, August 4th, we see some rainfall and snowfall up here for the northwestern United States and southwestern Canada, and then we see some of this activity in between continuing on. Let's just move this towards Friday afternoon, tomorrow from the time I'm making this video, and we can see again the eastern United States seeing a lot of activity, and also the southwest there, look at that, tons and tons of activity there. As we work our way towards Saturday afternoon, same story, eastern United States seeing a lot of activity, we do see a lot of this activity spreading through uh, the western United States, mostly due to a cold front rolling through just like this, so we do see some cold air moving in behind this cold front boundary, 
and that leads towards a lot of storminess during the region I circled in, especially up and down the Rockies here, as you can see. Now, by the time I reach Sunday afternoon, that'll be August 7th, it kind of all ties in together. We see just a lot of storminess here for the eastern two-thirds of the nation. Whether it's thunderstorms or showers, we see a lot of it there. Uh, now, by the time we reach Monday the 8th, we see something like this, uh, mostly here in this corridor, but definitely some stuff east of that as well. We're seeing, let's move our way towards Tuesday afternoon time frame, and as you can see, a lot of activity down here for the deeper south regions of the United States, and then up the east coast as well, especially with this kind of cold front of sorts moving through. Wednesday afternoon here, we can see this is going to be August 10th, we see most of our activity is in here. We see a little bit going on for the Northwest, but outside of that, I mean, really just the Eastern United States there. Now, Thursday afternoon, that'll be August 11th here. Something like this is what we're seeing, and then a little bit of showery activity there in the Northwest. Friday afternoon, mostly the deeper South, actually, by this point, there is some isolated little regions in here seeing some storminess across the United States, but mostly this area that I circled in is where we're seeing a lot of the activity. And then finally, by Saturday afternoon, that'll be August 13th. Again, deeper south, southeast. We see a little bit of activity up here, a little bit down here for the four corner states still, a little bit here for the uh, northwest as well. But that's basically it by the time we're reaching the end of this model run. Now, for total precipitation here, we're taking a look at about practically no precipitation in the whites. We're taking a look at about a tenth of an inch or less in the grays. Your greens will be a tenth of an inch to half an inch. Your blues will be half an inch to an inch. Your yellows will be an inch to two inches. Your reds will be two to five inches. And then your browns will be five to ten inches of precipitation in here. Now let's go ahead and move on. And what we're going to do is take a look here at this upcoming temperature pattern. Now for day one here, we're taking a look. This is going to be today, August 4th. We see some cooler temperatures in there. Also for the upper Midwest. Also for the Northwest. And then for the Southwest as well. There's some little pockets of cooler air. But everywhere in between, we're seeing above normal temperatures. Really, really hot temperatures. As we work our way towards tomorrow, Friday, we see a lot of heat up here in the central and the northeastern corners of the United States. Very, very neutral in between these regions here, as you can see. Very close to normal. Saturday the 6th, we see a bit of a cool down forming in here, mostly above normal temperatures here in the uh, region over here. So above normal, below normal down here. Uh, we're going to see these kind of shift and move towards each other. We see that by the time we're reaching Sunday the 7th here, this cool down is around that region, but the warm up is still around for this area. So again, still warming for this region, still cooling for this region here, and then kind of warm along the west coast there. Now for Monday the 8th, this will be day 4 approximately, we see this cooldown still moving kind of eastward slowly but surely. We see a lot of warmth here east of there and west of there. So that is kind of moving towards the middle of the United States, I would say. And then time, time, by the time we reach about Tuesday the 9th here of August, we definitely see that this cooldown is taking over the eastern United States. We have a little bit of a warm-up still for the east coast, but definitely a big warm-up out west there is what we're dealing with. Wednesday the 10th here. We see this cooldown really impacting all of these regions here. Uh, so this moves in with the cold front. Very, very neutral as we work our way towards the coast. But the further inland you go, the more below normal we're seeing. And then a lot of warmth here for the western United States and western Canada for the most part. Thursday, August 11th, we see a lot of cooler temperatures underneath and then up and down the east coast. A lot of warmth here for the northwest and north central United States. Friday the 12th here. Definitely still seeing this cool down for the eastern United States and then a lot of warmth here in this region that I'm circling in right now. So for the, the kind of the, the west and through the, the north central United States and the plains, we're seeing a lot of warmth in there. And then Saturday the 13th, that warmth mostly moves towards the central United States here primarily. And we see some warmth and some cooler air there for the west. But we have a lot of warmth here for the central United States, a lot of cooler temperatures here. Uh, in the eastern United States at this point. Now, so we work our way from a very flip-floppy but mostly warm pattern towards a mostly cooler pattern towards the middle point, point of August there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and take a look at this upcoming potential severe weather. Now here's the day one categorical outlook. This is for Thursday, August 4th. As you can see in the lighter greens, we have a general thunderstorm risk. That's where we expect general thunderstorms, but anything is possible, so heat every watch, warning, and advisory. In the three darker green regions there, that's where we have our marginal risk areas, and that's where we expect isolated severe weather to occur, Montana, Oklahoma, and Texas, and then up and down the Ohio Valley and interior northeastern 
the United States all expecting isolated to be rather. Now, day two, which will be Friday, August 5th, we have another very large general thunderstorm risk here for a lot of the eastern and central and western United States, mostly everywhere. Uh, this is where we expect general thunderstorms, but again, anything is possible. Heat every watch, warning, and advisory. We have the two darker green regions, again, one for the Ohio Valley and then one there for Montana. Again, that's our marginal risk where we expect isolated severe weather to occur. And then finally, day three here, we have two very large general thunderstorm risk areas where we expect general thunderstorms, but anything is possible. Heat every watch, warning, and advisory. That's for our two lighter green regions, and this is for Saturday, August 6th. Now we can see we also have that darker green region up there for Nebraska, South Dakota, Minnesota, Iowa, in through Wisconsin, and that's where we have that marginal risk where we expect isolated severe weather to occur. Anyway, for today's confidence tab, we're still out of four out of six like always. I don't really have anything to say about that, so we'll just move right on. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Bill Crates, James Wade, Dovin Nagel, Little Pan, Mandy Birchfield, Patrick Strickland, Dave Scott, and Donna Carnes as well. I'd also like to thank our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Kudalasa, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Bill Dallas, Garys, and John Khaleesi also. I'd also like to thank our channel members, Catbite, Stephen Fan, and Jeremy Cox as well. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.